Right, so in this video I'm just going to show you the, the kind of update progress. Uh, this is now on the GitHub, so you can go and download it. Uh, to build it, you just put the you download XBMC, uh, obviously the later version 3.5 upwards, um, and then you put it in the mod. You put it in the trunk folder, and then you just run the batch file, and it will give you an outputted folder with everything set up. You just have TP that to your Xbox. So what I've done since the last video is. Uh, I've added in the cabin theme, <coughs> excuse me, and I've redone the settings menu and the dialogues and just fixed up a lot of the skinning code and also updated the Python scripts um, for logging and just organised them better, improved them. So, oh, and there's an applications menu now. So. You've got ports, which is homebrew, so this will look for apps in e-homebrew, f-homebrew -home, F -homebrew and g-homebrew, so a homebrew folder in F, e, f or g. If it finds any XBE files, you'll be able to load them in here. Um, I've also done the context menu as well, that's now been updated. So. Anyway, so now in the settings you can adjust the sound volume up and down. Uh, the up and down on the right analog stick does nothing. You come in here and you do that. You can also mute the sounds. So the sounds are on and off. So uh, I'll get into UI settings in a minute. Other settings, you can refresh the emulator list. So if you add a new emulator, you can use this. And if you've, up, if you've supplied ROMs, and you've placed them in the ROMs folder, it'll appear in the menu. If you haven't, it doesn't appear. So basically, emulators that you add with no ROMs don't appear in the menu. Uh, refresh all layouts. Now, the way I get instant loading on uh, large ROM collections of cut files is I use static menus, basically. So what I do is when you scan, or when you scan in a directory for ROMs, or you just pick the auto create cut files, it will create these static files and basically apply layouts to them on the fly. So, well, these ones aren't. So, if you change a layout file, you'll need to come in and pick refresh all layouts. It literally takes about 10 seconds to leave in that. It's done. So, and that's 59 files it's written to. So, it doesn't take long. But if you ever update a layout file, so if you're creating your own layout file, you need to do this. But if you're if you're making, I'm not hint, advice advice if you're editing uh, a layout file, do it in the myprograms.xml and then copy it to its own XML file when you're finished doing it. Um, it just means you can just refresh the skin and do it faster. Uh, menu counters. You can refresh the cut files, so all the dot .cut files or counters will be refreshed. If you've added more Xbox games, then you can use the refresh XBE files. Unfortunately, this has to be done using a Python script. XBMC doesn't allow you, it doesn't allow you to tell how many games there is in a folder. So the only way to do it is through a Python script. Uh, movies and stuff like that, I think you can do it with, but not with games. Refresh all just does the cut files, the XB files, it also refreshes emulators in the layer file, the layout files as well. So it does everything. Uh, all create as it says, that will just go through any emulator you've installed, any ROMs for that emulator will basically create cut files for them. If there's no emulator, it just skips them obviously. If there's an emulator with no ROMs, it skips them as well. So it only creates cut files for the ROMs that are there. Um, I'll just show you me doing one manually. So it's like Game Boy Color. Now the manual way you pick a direct you pick an emulator folder, you pick OK and then it automatically defaults to that specific emulator's ROM folder. Now if there's ROMs in there, 
you just pick OK and it'll scan them in. If there's no ROMs, it'll just X out and nothing will happen. Um, this also allows you to specify a different location if you wish, so you can back out and go somewhere else if you've got ROMs in a different partition or whatever, then you can select them here. Pick OK. That's it done. Uh, generate cache thumbnails, that's only useful for Xbox games or any XBE game. I did use it for the cut files but due to me using static menus it's not required anymore. So that just generates thumbnails for any Xbox games that are on the hard drive. It saves you, for instance I've got 223. If I get into that menu for the first time, the thumbnails will take a while to populate. I can just come in here and within less than a minute it's done all the thumbnails and I can go in and they've all instantly load. It's, it's there, you don't need to use it. Now quit menu, you can restart XBMC MU station. You can restart the Xbox or you can shut the Xbox down and you get a yes no dialog. No is highlighted by default. Now UI settings, there's only two options in here. Uh, I might change this. Um, I'll add other stuff in here, but right now there there was more options in here, but I've moved them into their own thing as you'll see. So you've got the GUI calibration. Now when you do a first run of this, you'll get a welcome screen. It will tell you about the project. It will tell you where you place your ROMs, emulators, stuff like that. It will then refresh and populate the cut file folder, the ROMs folder. So they'll all have a folder structure where you place your ROMs and it will also allow you to calibrate your screen to fit the screen properly and then it will load into the main menu and it will also populate the counters and stuff like that so for like the ports and Xbox games if you have any games or anything like that it will have the counter already. So that just lets you calibrate the screen. Now home screen customization allows you to customise the home screen. So you can choose themes or you can enable different layouts so you can have like the icon layout, uh, you can have alternative carousel bar, alternative label position, colour, uh, you can change the animations, it goes from fade or sw uh, swipe, so if, by default it fades. Um, if you select, if you enable this, the animations at the background will slide in from the left or right side depending on what way you're moving. Uh, carbon, I'll set the carbon theme colour. That's only useful for the carbon theme. So I'll default that back to nothing. So as you can see up the top there, I've got the alternative home layout which is the icon view. I've got the alternative carousel bar and the alternative label position and colour. So for this theme, I'll use the NES theme, NES theme, because that's what I originally was set up. Now, this isn't included because I still don't have permission from the, the person who made the theme. I could use it, but I'd rather get his permission, because even though he's released all the texture files and it's open, it's, it's, it's open source, you know, um, I'd still rather get his permission. So until then, no luck. But you can just download it yourself and create your own one if you want. Um, I can include batch files to convert SVG files and stuff like that to PNG. So as you can see, this is how you would have this set up. So if we back out, the menu is set up the way it would be, as you've seen in the uh, customised screen. So. For instance, you can have a different layout. Well, I'll go disable this. Yeah, I'll disable it. And we'll go to the carbon theme. So the carbon theme is basically the carbon theme that you get with RetroPie or Emulation Station. Um, RetroPie 
is basically it's emulation emulation station on a Raspberry Pi basically, but it's called Re Retro Pi. Um, I've taken the SVG files, converted them to PNG, changed the sizes, stuff like that. I've also created a couple more, um, look for the Xbox and stuff like that. Um, I'd already created a pad uh, for my XBMC for kids, it's now XBMC for gamers, um, for basically showing you the button, look what the buttons do. So I'd created a, a control pad in Photoshop. So I used that, and you'll see that in a sec, I'll show you that. So, same again, you can customise the home layout if you want. The alternative carousel is actually an image. The default one is two images, it's 4x4 four four square for the top and bottom one. It's the same image, it's just it's using the colour diffuse to change the colour. So it's only it's one image used twice to create that effect. The actual carousel, or the alternative one, is actually an image. So you can have it any way you want. Um, well, there is only two positions currently. Um, but obviously if you know how to modify XML files and skin XBMC, you'll be able to do whatever the hell you want. Uh, so, I don't know how well you can see the colours in the top of this. I'll back out. So by default you get a nice blue colour. Um, that's the colour of my XBMC for gamers background. The default background colour is blue. Um, I thought I would use that. But you can change it to whatever you want. So you just basically enter six digits of six characters from 0 to F, which is just hex. That's not a very nice colour. Uh, Yeah, nice pinky colour. So, nice pink colour. You can have whatever colour you want, it's a hex colour. So, the opacity can't be changed, and um, that's set to 100. Or it's set, well, it's 100%, so it's not a there's no transparency at all. Um, but this changes all the colours across this theme. So, you customise it how you like. Um, the default colour that RetroPie uses is 8B0000. It gives you a kind of dark red, a kind of dark vivid red. Um, you can also have synopsis for these games. Right now it's just an image that gets loaded. Maybe if I can be bothered, I'll add um, actual XML so it parses an XML and gets information. The problem is, is I'll need to create a database to store these because it's too slow. Um, I suppose I could make it highlight an image so if you pause on something for more than a second it will parse the file and give you the synopsis. If not, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to show you something I've forgot to change a folder now. Right, so I had to make more changes to the, XB, uh, the XBMC source to remove. Usually, what happens when you have a theme, the skin dot get uh, skin dot current theme uh, information tag or label will parse the current theme selected. So usually it's skin default, but if you have an XBR file loaded, it will say the name of the XBR fi file dot XBR. Now I just modified the source again just to remove the extension from it because it's not needed. So it just makes it simpler. So you can have folders in the TBN file. So for instance, Synopsis is in its own folder. So you can have Synopsis for this different versions of different layouts and it doesn't affect any other layout. So this layout has its own folder, Carbon, and inside that folder you have the, a JPEG and a PNG file, the same name as the ROM file or CUT file, and it will use it. Um, if there's no 
a screenshot, you'll see your thumbnail or your whatever TBN file you've used for it. Um, so, yeah. That's really kind of it, I suppose. Kind of lost train of thought now. Um, oh, included there's a couple of emulators uh, SNES, NES, Genesis, Game Gear, Master System, uh, I think there might be a couple more. They're all included, so when you run the batch file, it will put them into the emulators folder, and all you do is FTP them over. All after that, all you need to do is just shove your ROMs in the ROMs folder. So for the Mega, uh, for the Genesis, it would be the underscore ROMs folder, and then put them inside the Genesis folder. So just put all your zip files in there, or your God, would they? I think it's bin files the Mega Drive uses, Genesis uses. Either or, you just put the zip files in there. And then you would press start and go to scan uh, all, well, create all, cut all the automatic, create cut files, or you can select the folder manually if you've already scanned in stuff. And it will just do that specific folder. So, um, let's do this game. It will auto launch the game. Um, you don't need to configure anything. To exit the game you just push the right stick in and you can pick exit game or you can do a soft reset. You know, the triggers back in black. Jeez, oh. The frame rate. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so yeah, so that's it launching ROMs. Um like I said it's 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 just, this is just a pet project, it's just I enjoy skinning, I enjoy doing stuff with XBMC, I'm learning Python in the process, so you know, it's a win win for everybody. You get to use it, I get to learn stuff. So yeah, that's the kind of latest version. Um, it's far from done, but right now it's at a usable state. You can use it for your Xbox games, you can use it for emulators, and you can use it for applications. Um, so, yeah, and it looks nice. And it's themable if you want to theme it. Uh, currently, I suppose I could add custom backgrounds, but right now it's kind of pointless because you have these backgrounds. Oh. So as you can see, stuff fades in, but when you change the animation, it slides in now. To be honest, I don't really like this one, but it looks nice with the carbon theme. As you can see. Um, so, yeah. That's it now. So, thanks for watching. Uh, the link in the description to the GitHub. So, feel free to do what you want with it. Try it out. Um, to download it, when you go to GitHub, on the right hand side, about a quarter of the way down the screen, there's a big green button, which will say, I think it says clone GitHub, or clone repository by default or something like that. I can't remember. It's a green button, you just click on it and pick download zip and you will get the xbmc-mustation-master folder and inside that folder is all the files that you need to build it and stuff like that so thanks for watching, cheerio